Hey everyone, welcome to The Rollout. I'm Lindsay Rousseau. And I'm Genevieve Marie. Hello and welcome. We have another amazing show for you today. And, uh, and I'm sorry we've been gone for so long, but we're back. You know. Yes, we took a small hiatus, but now we are back and hopefully we'll, we'll be filming regularly from yeah. now on. <laughs> and Lord knows we've got so much content out there now to catch up on and coming soon and Yes, all the great things. Um, And of course, Comic-Con next week, which we will be having a special panel. So if you're down there, join us Thursday at 1230 in room 29 CD. There it is. (laughs) Make sure I get that right. Uh, You can also follow us us on our social media for more details. Um, Okay, well, uh, yeah, let's dive in. So yesterday, or I guess Wednesday, we got the final installment in... Disney Plus's super cute teen drama, first Muslim American superhero on the big screen, Miss Marvel. Yes, I I love this show. I loved absolutely. it. <laughs> I, I, I am so in love with this show. <laughs> yeah, I first of all, I want to say that there's a lot of content out there that really wants to shy away from like being labeled as you know teen content or even content for teen girls especially and I don't think and this one didn't do that I know it doubled down I really like that it knew the genre that it was playing with it knew the audience that It who was watching it and they really just went to make the most high quality, you know, piece of media for it. I mean, it really had elements of like Scott Pilgrim, you know, with all of the kind of graphic and graffiti and there's the bright colors. Yeah. Yeah. I, (laughs) there, there was, I think a lot of people are worried about having the, the twilight effect where, people see a piece of media that is specifically meant for teen girls and they just automatically have that reaction and then with Twilight there was so much of a backlash an unnecessary backlash (laughs) to the media that you know that it was it was absolutely insane and so I think that it was good that Disney you know actually made something for you know teen girls right which obviously can be enjoyed by anyone I mean this is really a true family show I mean I I would say a, all ages will enjoy watching this show and it's got a little something for everybody I mean obviously Kamala is our lead character but the supporting cast around her just gives a broad range of characters to fall in love with as well um, which was something I really appreciated because um, it kind of it kind of reminded me a little bit of turning red and that it's like yes we've got the protagonist yeah. but like she's got her badass best friends with her too um, who really right. become crucial and like we really see that like she is the superpower person, but she really can't do it without her friends, um, especially in the season finale when they all come together. I just, I really enjoyed that element of it, that the the family and community were so integral to her personality, but also to her superhero character, you know, um, persona. So that was something that I really, really appreciated. Yeah. we You said that, you know, it's centered around family, which I absolutely loved, you know, I think that it really serviced both the the narrative, but also the culture that they were representing. And I absolutely, I loved the fact that her dad was, you know, just a goofball and that her mom was, you know, your very typical protective mom. And I, I think that everybody had as you said, everybody had a role to play and it was really giving, as you said, turning red, but also like those Encanto vibes too, where, you know, you have the family struggle and I think Encanto goes so hard, you know, um, Encanto goes so hard with the like 
family drama and the uh, ostracization of the main character whereas Mm. this whereas this one is a little bit like it's a little lighter than that and it's kind of silly to say that about like a cartoon versus like a live action but it really was um and the family drama and the struggles as you go through the um the show you see that a lot of that came in in the second uh, to last episode. Right. Um, and that was really interesting that it was more so outside forces bringing in the like the trauma and the um, the struggles to the family rather than in Kanto where it's like you have the grandmother and then like all the, the people in the family kind of pushing um Mirabel out whereas this one everybody yeah, they're really in, yeah everybody in this family is trying to um pull Kamala in mm-hmm. but not necessarily in the way that Kamala wants to be integrated into her family as a right. as a working piece of her family um but the intentionality of what they're doing is very caring. It comes from a place of love. Right. And you can see that this family has a lot of love for one another. Yeah. They, and which we really see in the final episode when, oh yeah, you know, of course, so she tells her family, I mean, obviously her whole family knows that she is light girl or what will become this Marvel. Um, her mom makes her costume for her. So, you know, very Spider-Man vibes oh, there. So, I love um, that. <laughs> all of her friends know who she is. So it's it's not as clandestine as like the Spider-Mans were, where he spends right. <laughs> half of his plot line worrying that people are going to find out who he is. She just kind of, you know, takes the mask on and off and, you know, uh, really, again, like we said earlier, she really embraces the support of her family and her community and her friends. And um, I just, I loved loved that aspect of it and at the end of the day yes there are elements of this that are very very specific to you know like the desi community the pakistani american community the muslim american community but there's also a lot of things that just anyone who's ever been a teenager can relate to um especially a teenage girl i mean so many of these issues can transcend culture which is why i feel like this show is so relatable to anybody um, oh yeah, absolutely. But even more relatable, obviously, to those people from the culture who, you know, I've been reading reviews where they've been going into different communities and interviewing and talking to some of my um, South Asian friends who are just like, oh, there's all these little Easter eggs that are just like, oh, my dad totally does that all the time. You know, before <laughs> we go driving, he says a little prayer. And so switching back between Urdu and English is just, um, yeah. I there When you say that, there there's one thing that I absolutely... <laughs> that made me laugh out loud that is like that is specific and I think a lot of people probably also like know but um the halal haram hats (laughs) that that destroyed me it was hilarious and even Kamala's like what are you doing (laughs) and I absolutely love that the white guy gets the gets the haram hat yeah Yeah. I fucking died uh (laughs) that was one of the things that like I was like, this is absolutely a perfect integration. Yeah. Chef's chef's freaking kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, I also very much appreciate that they, um, when they went back, um, uh, when they, you know, when they went back in time and they were um, showing the, uh, the, the liberation of, her uh, partition yeah the partition well it it spans both the you know uh, uh both of these historical events but um i i like that there wasn't like one nice british soldier yeah no i mean you know like we're I just mean, like oh yeah the british were bad but this guy's one of the yeah. good ones no this really like good i think you. really showed i mean obviously if this was like rated r they could have gone darker but i was like i think this really did a great job of showing how destructive colonialism was and how it literally tore a country apart and you know like because even before the flashback you know the back in time episode 
the parents, the aunties make reference. Everyone's got a partition story. Everyone has stories about how their families were torn apart when these two countries are created. So I really, I really respected that they made colonialism a bad guy um, and didn't, didn't try and sugarcoat it. Like you said, like they didn't have like the one nice soldier. No, it's like right. <laughs> this country's being torn apart right now. Families are literally being ripped to shreds. There's no happy ending to this. Right. I, and I also, I think they handled it well. And yeah. I mean, that's coming from somebody who obviously is not, you know, Indian or Pakistani. Um, but I think like for the story and for using such a, um, using such a like torrid piece of history to use as the backdrop for your story, I think that it was handled in, you know, I think it was handled well because it wasn't like they they didn't signpost and they didn't like take things and like drag them out and then like make it like I don't I don't know what I'm trying I don't know how to say it but I don't think that they really like made overt like they didn't make it about the partition you know they didn't yeah. make it about it but they made it background of what was, you know, what was going on, the greater, like right. the love story, the family story. Right, how it tied into how this. It tied, right, how it affected the family and families yeah. that, you know, right. that eventually, you know, they immigrated to America, but then they still have their roots in Pakistan with the grandmother. Right, right. Um, and, you know, some of the, and again, we saw this with Turning Red and I think we're going to see this anytime they decide to make a movie about quote unquote other cultures is, you know, early Rotten Tomato reviews. I mean, people were review bombing before the show came out, specifically <laughs> arguing that, oh, God Marvel's just, yeah, Marvel's just being woke. This is just another attempt to be woke and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, to be fair, the comic book came out in 2013, 2014. So, um, but uh, I, and we've reviewed shows where we felt like they took a heavy hand and really hit us over the head with, we're doing diversity. Oh my I God. Get, I didn't get that Star from the show. Trek. I oh. thought they did such an amazing job of integrating the community, the mosque, the different religious practices, um, what it means to be Muslim American um, in this day and age. And I don't think they hit us over the head with it. And I think one of the things that stood out to me the most was when they were, you know, when damage control or they were talking, yeah, when damage control was like, hey, go surveil all the mosques there. And uh, she just offhandedly says like, you know, well, they're already all under surveillance, you know, this, you know, and right. uh, when, um, you know, Kamala's best friend talks about, you know, the, the mosque being raided multiple times and the fact that the agents don't take their shoes off, like little things like that, um, I thought were just so impactful without them being like, Look guys hey, over here, me. we're woke, we're different. No, I thought it was perfectly integrated and still impactful at the same time. Right. I God, you sent my mind reeling back to Picard. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh boy. Oh my God. Yeah. So if you need an example of what not to do in storytelling when trying to integrate and and make Mm -hmm. like and, and make these issues a part of your character's daily lives Picard is is like on the is on the the bottom end of the scale yeah, the other side on the on the very very other side and then Miss Marvel I think hit the mark very perfectly mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and that I just the fact that they just like brought in ice <laughs> oh it, yeah, yeah and they were just like this is how it happens and they get like up it feel like they just reached through the screen and grabbed my face and was like I think <laughs> I'm like okay yeah thank you where this this did not do that yeah yeah and, and mm, the storytelling like the storytelling in this I felt was very nuanced I thought that they did an excellent job of taking the character Miss Marvel and because she's not 
the same as she is in the comics. No, they made quite a few changes. Which yeah. I thought were very good changes because yeah. I've heard a lot of people like talk about things like, oh, like Miss Marvel, you know, Lady Thor, all of that. Like, just like, why are you taking a character and then like making an offshoot or a, a lesser than mm -hmm. like copy or just like, oh, you have a male version of this. Like, well, here's a female version with the same name, except it has miss or lady or misses in front right. of it. Right. And I think it was smart of them to kind of get in the weeds a bit and then cut their own path to making this superhero some a, a superhero who's all her own who very much has her own powers her own history the reason why she has her powers you know is very different from carol and the fact that it also ties into her culture and her family mm -hmm. first and foremost her family history is very very important i right. think like that those were all very correct choices because at the end when she's sitting in her room and she's looking at her outfit and she has the Miss Mar uh, the she has the Marvel poster next to her and she's like looking in the mirror and you can see this kind of comparison. Yeah. Like I wasn't like, oh, it's a carbon copy of, you know, no, and everything is, is right. This person is her own superhero and she has and she came from becoming a fan of a superhero and then coming into her own as right. her own superhero and they oh. and they do a really good job of explaining you know why her why her superhero persona is similar to og carol Danvers, miss marvel prior to being captain marvel you know when her necklace breaks and they turn it and we see that you know the what was Miss Marvel symbol um, on her shirt for Kamala? It's because that's the piece of her necklace that is her name in Arabic. And then the sweet, sweet conversation with her dad on the roof, where it's not her taking on Carol's old persona. It's, oh, I was always meant to be like this because her name um, means Marvel, essentially. Um, uh, so I really liked how they like you said, didn't just put her in an outfit and be like, okay, I'm the new Miss Marvel. It's like all of it made sense as to how she ended up where she was. Um, and of course, there is going to be a direct connection to Carol Danvers, which spoilers, obviously, uh, we see in the post credit scene, which is going to be, I'm assuming the foundation for the Marvel's movie coming out. Um, so we are going to learn about that tie in, but she is absolutely she, again, she she does remind me a little bit of Peter Parker and that, you know, Spider-Man is your friendly neighborhood spider. And Kamala definitely came out of this series as the superhero for this community. You know, we say early on, well, I just have never seen any superheroes who look like me. There's no superheroes who are brown girls from Jersey, she says in like the first episode. And yes, you know, it's the MCU. She's going to go do bigger, badder things. But at the end of the day, she is a superhero for this community. Right. I think, I mean, I think you hit on something earlier where she, <laughs> she is very much like Peter Parker, but she is the worst kept secret of yeah. her. <laughs> Everyone knows. She, she is very, <laughs> it is very like, ah, where she just takes off the mask yep. <laughs> whenever she wants. She's just walking around with like a jacket and a hat, but like the jacket is Oh, like gaping open and it has her outfit under her yeah. outfit underneath and she's got her mask in her hand it's just like yeah I she doesn't like she's not really she's hiding it but not like right hiding it I'm and like it's more she's I, hiding it from damage control than the community and the community is helping protect her so right and so I think that mm -hmm. that is a major difference between yeah. her and Peter Parker like the keeping the secret identity thing is a bit uh, tired and tuckered out where right. this this seems very realistic to how like honestly if I was a superhero 
I'd be telling my mom, I'd be telling my sister, yeah. you know, well, people I, would know. And that's the thing is like, I don't think I could keep that under wraps. Like, I don't think I could be like, especially a, a teenage girl. Well, especially oh, a teenager yeah. in general, like she's already going through teenage shit. She didn't need this, but you know, we saw this, I mean, they, we saw this in Hawkeye, um, you know, this whole not hiding your person, your, your persona. And I guess to be fair, Clint Barton never really hid that he was Hawkeye, but you know, he just walks around the street, no mask, no nothing. And he's just, you know, Hawkeye. He's just with Martin. Right. Um, and it doesn't look like Kate Bishop is really hiding her persona much either. I mean, her mom knows what she's out doing, and right. Kim Pan instantly knew who she was. So I think, yeah, I think Marvel is they don't seem to be as worried about secret identities. Um besides no. spider-man peter parker and that was played out you know with the last two movies that i don't think we need to delve into you know explosive reveals and you know right i think i think it is the smarter choice because then you can have more character interactions yes. and you know yeah everybody knows who everybody is everybody knows who dr strange is and right. you know everybody everybody knew who you know, Tony Stark was. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think that this is like, yeah, she kind of has to keep it, you know, a secret because, you know, she's still a teenager and she has, you know, a lot of people who are, you know, in her, you know, she has her family, but then she has her community, which is also a minority group. And, you know, they're already being, you know, surveilled yeah. as it is. And so I think that, she's cautious but she's also not as you said like she's just hiding from the authorities right. who in this case is um damage control right. and well and i i think to like what you were saying earlier about how they didn't sugarcoat you know the british soldiers and the damage of colonialism i think they did a really good job of doing that with the american government um yeah, they didn't pull. They, they didn't throw it in your face, but they didn't pull any punches. Being like, uh, "I'm not," you know, unlike Peter Parker, she's not a threat to her community. She's not worried about that secret getting out. The real threat is these government agencies who don't trust this community, who have them under surveillance. Who, you know, well, why are they going after this superpowered individual and not the five million others, or you know, not millions, but you know, all the others that are out there. Oh, well, they're going after them because they are part of this Muslim community, which the government doesn't trust. And I thought they did a really good job of because that's obviously, and again, we are not speaking as members of this community, but you know, for my friends who talk about it, that's just a daily reality is that, you know, they understand that they are part of a community that a lot of members of this, you know, country um, don't support and feel wary of that the government feels wary of, and that's part of their identity. And I thought that they did a really good job of, they didn't have that one good agent who comes in to help them. No, they right. helped themselves. I mean, yes, at the, it was really nice at the end when the cops, like the local cops stood up to protect her. And again, going back to the community and it was the locals versus, you know, this big government agency. Um, I liked that. Yeah. They didn't have some, some government agent, you know, shield or whatever, come in and save them because that's not their reality. They've never had, you know, big brother come in and save them before. Right. They, they absolutely didn't lampshade and they didn't throw it in your face. Right. They, you know, it was just, you know, side commentary and just, you know, it was just posited, I, you know, it was just um, shown to us as this is reality and, you know, and they just, kind of moved on you know with the story which is great they didn't just like have any scenes where they were just like where they like highlighted it and they're like look at this look at this it's right. just you know thing happens racist comment or right. you know prejudice actions were taken and you're like but the story continued to move on because that's just how thing that's how reality works that's how real right. life works it's not like a zooming in on, you know, one specific event and like one singular bad actor. It's just built into the fabric yep. of reality of, of, of everyday life. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really, 
enjoyed. Yeah. I mean, so much about this. To be honest. And I'm glad that they, I'm glad that they kept it in, in the realm of, of levity. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that they still kept it, um, you know, appropriate for teens and they didn't try and go like grim dark with it or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had enough of that lately. Like we, we needed some brightness and I think they're definitely setting her up to be kind of the, uh, the lighter elements of all of these darker, bigger superheroes, you know, these very serious superheroes, like she's going to be the comic relief, I think, moving forward, at least a little bit. I'm very interested to see if she and Peter Parker ever encounter each other, um, because now she's the baby of the group, you know, because Peter Parker's gotten older. He's he's not a kid anymore. I was going to say, I'm like, now that Peter Parker is big, sad, (laughs) we have Miss Marvel to come in and and be the relief for the most part. Yeah. Um, And then, Obviously the, the final, you know, the, the final reveal besides Carol Danvers at the end with her awesome new costume, which I uh, thought was pretty badass and setting up the Marvels. The other thing we have now officially set up within the MCU is the existence of mutants, which obviously, again, this deviates hugely from the comic books where she ends up being an inhuman, but as we all know, the inhuman TV show totally bombed and no one wants to talk about it. And so this was, now whether or not this was the best character to introduce mutants into the universe, that's up for debate, Um, but they've done it. And we had the little X-Men theme song Sting, which I was just like, I was so excited because that was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. And of course we're getting X-Men 97 coming up. Um, But yeah, they have now officially opened the floodgates to mutants in the universe. Yeah, I I mean, like, I guess it's not because they did have, uh, they did have Charles come in. They did in the alternate timeline, yeah. Yes, which I guess is a good way to like, it's a good foray into the universe of, of X-Men where it's just like, it absolutely is happening, folks. Yep. <laughs> here, if you weren't certain is. about it before, you are now. Right. And so now I think they're just leaving little breadcrumbs around yeah. for everybody. And even, you know, even Kamala was like, yeah, it's just another label. Like whatever it is, right. it'll just be another label. I don't care. So maybe yes. she isn't going to dig too deep into that. Like, yeah. you know, I think maybe it's a good way of introducing the fact that there are mutants in this world. Right. But I don't think they're gonna. Yeah, I don't think that's not her going story to be to tell. too involved in it. Right. It's just kind of a fun little like, oh yeah, and by the way, you know, she's a mutant. And yeah. then like they'll be able to bring her in on X-Men related things. Right. But right. probably not as the like the front runner. No, I I and I totally agree with that. Um I'm, I'm very interested to see how they go about integrating and if you know we're gonna be rehashing old characters or if they're gonna kind of do like Guardians of the Galaxy and pull in some lesser known mutants that we haven't exhaustively seen on the screen already because that might be kind of fun right I'm curious to see if we're going to get like Logan 1000.0 right right I mean you know we set up Weapon X and you know Mm -hmm. she's still out there and uh we could see but yeah I mean I uh, you know for for all that the, the that the Marvel Universe has done and been going very dark and very deep Um, I really think they shine when they bring levity into it. And this show showed it and, you know, we'll probably get around to talking about Thor love and thunder, but obviously Taika Waititi with his humor pretty much saved the Thor franchise. Guardians of the galaxy has always been, you know, quirky off, you know, off, off, you know, off kilter. And I think the fans really react to that. Like they like everything, not being so doomsday all the time. Right. Well, I mean, it's also, there's superhero movies. Like these things are not, you know, these things are not life and death. These things are not like, you know, you're not trying to make the next Schindler's list here. So it's, I think that when you put, when you put these superhero movies, these big, exciting blockbusters in a position where they're, you know, they're fun, they're quirky, you know, they're just a good, like their own overall, you know, good time, you know, it's a fun ride. Yeah. I think that people are very much in the mood to have that when they go to something, especially when the posters 
of these films are also so colorful and so, yeah. you know, upbeat and light looking. Yeah. Um, you know, Doctor Strange was one thing. I mean, it was marketed as, you know, like an adventure slash horror. Horror-ish, yeah. Horror mm-hmm. elements. I would say there were horror elements. I don't, I wouldn't yeah. say that it was anything like a, a real horror. Mm-hmm. Um, but they still had the humor. They still had, yeah. you know, lighter moments amongst the the dark. And then obviously with Sam Raimi, you're going to get that quirkiness mm-hmm. kind of built in into the mix. Yeah. Um, while we're at it, because I think we are going to go back and do a Doctor Strange uh, yeah. multiverse of madness post-mortem. But while we're on the subject, um, Miss Marvel, as far as ranking, and, I, and I'm not saying that we're going to rank these characters, but like the handling of female characters with Marvel Studios, especially, has been very yep. hit or miss. And yeah, watch our review of Black Widow to see our thoughts on how women have been handled in this uh, universe. <laughs> and they've got they they got ten years of fucking up Black Widow to make up for it. And thank you, Scarlett Johansson, for pushing Marvel into, you know, the modern age. Uh, So many. So it's sad that it takes one of the most prominent actresses in the world to I mean, she's basically she's basically the Tom Cruise for female actress besides Charlize Theron. Right. Like she's basically up there like the Brad Pitt, the Tom Cruise. Yeah like version of like the female you know the actress you know of of star you know stardom and she really did push and push and push to get to where they are now Mm -hmm. however they they still they still cannot handle female characters in a way that is consistently good Mm-hmm. that is consistently um tells a, a nicely fleshed out story that also doesn't fall into certain tropes right. and um we won't dive into it very much here but uh because it's going to be the entire crux of my focus for uh <laughs> for my focus for um yeah. the multiverse of madness but Wanda got a bit tropey for me. A little tropey. And, and I will say for Miss Marvel, to their credit, there was, I mean, I'm looking at the writing. I mean, obviously the creators were, were female, but I'm looking at the writers' uh, cre- uh, credits right now. And they had a lot of women in that room. And it really shows when you bring in voices of people who have lived that, it makes a big difference as opposed to projecting what you think you know, that means to be, and especially for this show, when according to USC, which, you know, we touched on in our LA Comic Con panel, and I sure will, I'm sure will come up next week. So far, Muslim Americans have had less than 2% of speaking roles in film and television, less than 2%. And I think Ms. Marvel now makes up that 2%. Um, (laughs) So to have people for for this year. Yeah. So to have people in the writer's room, and we've talked about this in the past, to have people in the writer's room who can truthfully and and authentically put those experiences and bring those experiences to life keeps it from falling into that tropey, cringy, you know, personification of what they think this person would be like. Right. Also, it opens up more avenues for the characters, the the literal character's journey. Yes. Um, Because a lot with Doctor Strange, like we, they're taking a lot of they're taking a lot of cues from past films yeah. and and how female villains are uh, handled in in past you know films, and they're really they're they're making them do a lot of legwork. Yeah, and we can we can discuss it later when we do that episode, but 
the question is, is like, you take these tropes, you take these story beats that you know are, you know, you know, that are out there in the genre of horror. Right. And you wonder, and you look at, um, you look at Doctor Strange, the new movie, and you're wondering, does it, does it take these tropes? It definitely does take these tropes. However, does it spin them on their head? Does it subvert them? Does right. it do something different with them? Right. And the answer will be given to you in that yes. episode because yes, I don't I want to give it away. We won't give it away here. We we will we will wrap up with this, but yes, please stay tuned for that. And if you um, are interested in, you know, some things we've talked about previously, check out our Black Widow episode from God knows, I, I don't know, a year ago now, where we dive into some of these issues and um, same thing with Turning Red. But uh, but all in all, um, you know, uh, Miss Marvel just left me feeling happy. And, you know, we've all needed some pick-me-ups the past <clears throat> months uh, or so. And Miss Marvel um, and Thor Love and Thunder were kind of those pick-me-ups for me. So I was, um, yes, I was very, very pleased with this series. Right. There's hope on the horizon, at least for Marvel films. At least for Marvel. We'll see. <laughs> at least for Marvel films. Yeah. I think they're definitely taking cues and learning their lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's our show. As always, let us know your thoughts. Yes. Uh, also, if you want to see more of our shows, please like and subscribe and ring that bell and do all those other things that every other YouTuber tells you to do. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was the rollout and we, we will, will geek, geek, with you geek with you next, next week. week. <laughs> <laughs> the infle- I, oh, that was a bad inflection. <laughs> geek with you next, geek with you geek. next week. Next. You, what, what, what is it? You put the wrong, you next the wrong syllable. <laughs> Yeah, the emphasis is on the wrong syllable. Yeah, okay. Bye, guys. Bye.